In a previous video, we were looking at how to get ideas for your custom AI app. One of the ways is to browse Flippa, which is a buy and sell website. And we stumbled across this business. Does it look familiar to you? Well, it should because it's the free auto blogger template that I've been making videos about on my channel for the past month or so. And honestly, that's a great idea. With this free template, I'm giving you guys full commercial rights to do what you want with it. So turning it into a custom AI app, finding customers and then charging them to use it is a fantastic idea. And it's a great way to get a head start on your first AI side hustle. Let me show how you can do it yourself. First off, we know this is a good idea because it has 1,685 installs already. People are using the autoblogger for themselves, for their own businesses, to generate thousands of articles at a time. If you're completely new to the autoblogging concept, there's a full playlist about the topic on my YouTube channel. We start with performing an SEO heist, I show you past results, and then it ends with a fully featured autoblogger template. It's completely free for Bubble, and it teaches you how to install it how to configure it to your website, and where to get it. I'm gonna drop a card in the top right corner right now. If you wanna go ahead and watch that to get caught up, you can do so. If not, stick with me here. Here I am on the Bubble homepage. I'm gonna to click to create a new app, and we're gonna start from a template. We're gonna start from the Auto Blogger template, and I'm gonna call this app Auto Post to Shopify. My business idea is entrepreneurs with a Shopify website they're gonna sign up to use my product, which allows them to auto post thousands of blogs to their Shopify store around all the keywords related to their product. I'm gonna click get started. In order to use the auto blogger template, because it uses a feature called backend workflows, we do need to be on the starter plan. But Bubble offers a free trial, it's 14 days, so I'm gonna click activate free trial. Because we're offering this as a service, we're not gonna need this homepage. So instead of a home page that houses our articles as a blog, we're gonna need something like a sign up page. So I'm gonna go over the top left here and click add a new page, call it home, click create. On this home page, we're gonna add some components. I'm gonna scroll down here and drag the sign up component onto the page. Let's change the logo and the heading text. There we go. Let's change this color of the button Let's change it to a similar green. Awesome, now I need to connect these input fields. So first I'm gonna to go to data. I'm gonna to go to the user data type. We're gonna create a new field. Let's call it full name. And that field type is going to be text. Hit create, back in design. I'm gonna click on this button. Let's go add workflow. We're gonna to click to add an action. Go account, sign the user up. Email is going to be input sign up emails value. Password is going to be input sign up passwords value. We also have a re enter password input box, which means we're going to require a password confirmation. And I'm getting the names of these input boxes by double clicking on the element. And you can see this one is called input sign up re enter. And I'm going to click on that to see the last bit of the text password. So I can click yes to require a password confirmation and I'm going to click this and that is input sign up re-enter passwords value. We're going to change one more field on the user data type. I'm going to click to add. It's that full name data type we created. I'm going to click here and that is input sign up names value. Perfect. Once the user has signed up, we're going to click to add another action. We are going to navigate, go to a page, and let's go to the auto blogger page. This is how the auto blogger page looks in your free templates. For this specific web app, we are only generating to Shopify. So I can delete this option up here, but instead I can add an image element and make it something small, something like 35 pixels. I'm gonna to go to appearance and we're gonna change the roundness to 100. That makes it a round image. Then I'm gonna to go to data, the user data type, create a new field. We're gonna call this avatar. That field type is going to be an image. Click create. Over on flaticon.com, I'm gonna search for avatar. This is a good one right here. I'm going to click to download. 
And then for the default avatar image, I'm gonna to click to upload, choose that image, click open, and then in design here, I'm gonna click dynamic image, insert dynamic data. It's gonna be the current user's avatar. So at the top of the page, we now have a profile button. And if I click to add a new page, call that profile, click create. Back on the auto blogger, I can click on this image, go to add workflow. When that image is clicked, we are going to navigate to a new page and we're gonna to navigate to the profile page. We also don't need the group at the bottom here because we're posting everything to their Shopify store. This would be if we were posting to Bubble, so I'm gonna delete this. And here we have a basic custom GPT page ready to generate thousands of articles for your customer. But we have a few more things to configure. So first, let's go to our plugin tab and set up the API connector. On the left side, I'm gonna click plugins. This template already has the API connector installed, so I'm gonna click this. I'm gonna expand OpenAI for content dash type. The value needs to be application slash JSON. These are two shared headers that are needed for all of your OpenAI API calls. And then for authorization, you're gonna write bear space and then your secret key. You get your secret key by going to platform.openai.com, hovering over the left side, API keys, and then click create new secret key, call it whatever you want, create secret key, and then copy that. Next, I'm gonna go down to Shopify. For content dash type, again, it's gonna be application slash JSON. For the X Shopify access token, we're gonna to get the user to fill in what theirs is. So I'm gonna actually copy this text. I'm gonna delete this as a shared header. And then in the create article API call, I'm gonna click add a header, add this in as the key, and then uncheck private. This means it's gonna be dynamic data that your customers will have to fill in for themselves. In the URL, we're also gonna to have to create custom parameters. And that needs to be the URL. So I'm gonna add these square brackets around this part of the URL. And instead we can actually just name this URL. So that is not gonna be private as well. And then this number part of the URL also needs to be custom. So I'm gonna go like this and write blog number, end it with the square bracket, uncheck private as well. So these two portions of the URL, the first part, whatever their Shopify website name is, and then whatever blog they wanna to post to, those are the two things your users need to fill out in your custom AI app. Obviously, we're gonna need a page in the web app that your users can use to write in their details, and that's why I created the profile page. So I'm gonna to go to the profile page, I'm gonna double click it, go to layout, change it to column. Let's make the builder width a bit smaller so we can see everything on the page. And I'm gonna paste in a few input elements, three of them. Let's click the first one, hold shift, click them all. I'm gonna right click, group elements in column container. And in that column container, I'm gonna apply a gap spacing between the elements. We're gonna do 25 pixels in between each of them. Let's make sure the max width of this group is something like 500 pixels as well. We're gonna center it on the page. And then in each of these input boxes, I'm gonna make sure there is no margin on the right side, just so it stretches. Let's make that 25 pixels from the top. I also wanna add in some heading text so they know it's the profile page. And we'll make sure this text is really large, something like maybe 36, make it super bold. I'm gonna write profile. This first input box, the placeholder, is going to be the X Shopify access token. The next input box is going to be called the Shopify store URL. And the last input box is going to be called the blog number. Now, if a user was new to your app, they wouldn't know how to get these details. I'm going to show you how to do it in this video. But what I would do if this was my app is create some info text around each of the inputs telling them how to get that specific information, or you can drop something like a video. I'm gonna drop this right here. It links to YouTube, and I would create a quick YouTube video about how to get the details. You drop in that YouTube video ID, and then your users have the option to click to watch the video, kind of like a help doc, which will teach them how to get the information. 
On your customer's Shopify dashboard, click settings. And first off, this is their store ID. So I'm gonna copy this and that's what's gonna be pasted in the Shopify store URL. I'm gonna create a Word doc just to house this information for when we test it. Next, we're gonna go down to apps and sales channels. We're gonna click develop apps, allow custom app development. Click that again. We are going to click create an app, call it whatever you want. Click create app, click configure admin API scopes, search for blog, select write and read content, and then click save. And then go over to API credentials, click install app, click install. And then that gives you the X Shopify access token. So I'm going to click reveal token once and then copy this and we're gonna save it in that document. Next, click the X button here. We're gonna to go to online store. We're gonna to go to blog posts. I'm gonna click create blog post and just call this one test, click save. I'm gonna go back. Now it will allow me to click the manage blogs option. It will show all of the users blogs here. I'm gonna click under the news one and then it's the number it gives you in the URL. So let's copy this and paste it into the document. So now we can start saving all this information to the user data type. So I'm gonna to go to data, and under user, we're gonna create a new field. The field name is X Shopify access token. That field type is a text, click create. The next field is Shopify store URL. That field type is also a text, click create. And then one more field, that is gonna be called blog number and that field type will also be a text, click create. Now in design, let's add a button to this input group. I'm gonna move it to the bottom and we're gonna call that button save. And when that button is clicked, we're gonna to click to add an action, data, make changes to a thing. We are changing the current user and we're changing all of those fields. So X Shopify access token, is that input's value? Shopify store URL is that input's value. And finally, blog number is that input's value. You could also add an action as a notification that says your changes have been saved. These are all special UI features that helps your app be more friendly to its users. There's one more thing we need to do if we wanna turn this template into a web app. We need to clean up the backend workflow. So a lot of the workflows we don't need anymore because we're not posting to WordPress or Bubble, only to Shopify. So this orange one is the Shopify, which means I can delete the blue and the green ones, and I can clean up this only when condition. It just says that it only starts when there are more than one keyword in the input box, and the rest we can keep the same. There's also an option to use stable diffusion instead of Dolly 3 for your image creation. I show how to set that up in all the previous videos on the Autoblogger. Now we can go up here over to the backend workflows and I would have to change all the Shopify workflows. Let's just do Dolly 3 for now. And in the step four action, which creates the article for Shopify, we now have to add a dynamic URL, blog number, and access token. So I'm gonna click on this, go insert dynamic data, current users, Shopify store URL, the blog number is gonna be current users blog number, and the Shopify access token is gonna to be current users X Shopify access token. So whatever user started the backend workflow and whatever their Shopify store is, that's where it's gonna post the articles to. With all that configured, it's now time to test it out. So my customer lands on the signup page. I'm gonna write my name, Wes GPT. My email, heywesfrank at gmail.com. My password, 12345. Re-enter password, 12345. Hit sign up. Awesome, now I'm gonna to go to the profile page and fill in all these inputs. I've stored that information in a document, so I'm gonna copy all of this. There we go, click save. You can see in the backend database that those details have been saved. Now I can generate some articles, I'm gonna select GPT 3.5 Turbo. I'm gonna choose a post interval length of one minute and start entering some keywords. Let's say my Shopify store sold supplements. I wanna write an article on the best supplements of 2024 and then one on the best fish oil supplement. 
Let's click generate posts. We get a notification that our articles are being written by the AI. Please check back later to see the results. There we go. Both articles have finished generating and there they are posted to my Shopify store. This is the top supplements to try in 2024. This is the full article. We got an image too. You'll notice that doing this was free for the user. If you wanted to make a business out of this, you'd have to charge them. And I teach all of that in the online course, how to build a custom AI app. Head over to westgpt.mykajabi.com. Link is in the description below. And if you click on view the syllabus, it's going to send you down to the bottom of the page. Hover over module four monetization and we'll teach you one time payments for lifetime access, charging subscriptions, a credit system, free trials, and there's a new lesson being released soon called daily credits. So if you want to use your app almost like a lead magnet, you could give your users free credits that refresh daily. So let's say they get to generate two articles per day forever. Come check this course out. I'd love to have you on board for the first cohort. I'm going to help you build and launch your first AI side hustle this month built from your custom GPTs. And if you like this video, I have two more on the screen right now. I picked these two out of my YouTube library. I think you'll like them best. So give one a click, give it a watch. I'll see you in there. Peace.